You're listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy. Learn about how gratitude turns what you have into enough through stories of motivation and inspiration. Wherever you are in your life and whatever you're going through, That Gratitude Guy is here to help you achieve great things and live a happier, healthier life. Change the way you live today right here with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy starting. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to That Gratitude Guy podcast. I am David George Brooke, your host, where my mission is to have guests that relate and recall moments of their lives that were propelled and energized by utilizing the power of a gratitude mindset. You can expect to get some great tips and takeaways from each of my special guests. And also, my podcast is downloaded every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m., and that is at Pacific Standard Time on the Transformation Talk Radio Network, which is available on Apple, Spotify, and Google. And you could please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. I always appreciate that. I do gratitude keynote speaking and gratitude coaching, and you can reach me at thatgratitudeguy.com or by email at david at thatgratitudeguy.com. So let me get on with the show and introduce you to my guest. That's always a favorite part of my program is my weekly guest. And no exception, I'm excited to have this young lady on the show today. Denise Stiegel is the CEO and curator of Living Healthy List. Her mission is to excite, engage, and educate, empower women to make well-informed decisions so they can live the vibrant life they were meant to be. Or meant to live, I should say. Her career bang- began with a bachelor's degree in hotel, restaurant, and business management with a focus on nutrition. As a curator at Living Healthy List, she wants you to look at your health and wellness in a different way. She has the answers to your most burning health and wellness questions and offers a welcoming community to provide you direction so you can be the leader of your own journey. She has condensed 25 years of experience in study in nutrition, cooking, exercise, and coaching to help you find a happy, healthy, sustainable lifestyle that works for you. Sounds good to me. Denise, welcome to the program. Hi, David. Thank you. It's great to be here with you today. You bet. You bet. So I always start out with the same question, just for the context. Tell the listeners and viewers, because this goes out on YouTube as well, how you and I met. You and I met a few months ago now. Oh, gosh, I guess it was more than a few months, maybe eight months ago, uh, on a call through Cornelius Stephanie Media Group. Mm -hmm. That is how we connected. And we had a great conversation a couple weeks ago and just thought that this would be so much fun to talk again and uh, bring other people into this conversation with us. Absolutely. And, And for those people that don't know, and I got somewhat of the history, Uh, go back, back us up a little bit and talk about kind of starting from your degree that you got and then kind of the journey forward and maybe some of the highlights, those, those key years right after you graduated and started down this road. You know, it's funny. I'm one of the few people who actually are still working somewhere in connected to the field that they actually graduated from college Mm. from. So my degree from Penn state is hotel restaurant management. Um, Back in the day, you know, I took nutrition classes, food science classes. I even took a class on how to put a restaurant together. So a little, when, it, when, it, when, it, when, it, when I talk about restaurant business, it really was focused on the business aspect. So that's really where I feel I get my business experience from is um, partly my degree, but also working in, in restaurants for as long as I did. Um, let's see, when I graduated you know, it was one of those things. I actually worked in Atlantic City. I worked for the Sands Hotel wow. and Casino in Atlantic City. That was my first job out of college. Um, for a while, I worked in the housekeeping department because it was a hotel. And as a manager, you kind of need to know a little bit of every department. Um, but I really was much more comfortable in the food and beverage area. We had some great, really high-end restaurants at that hotel at the time. So it was really fun for me to take my education in nutrition and then really kind of apply it or see it applied uh, when it came to actual feeding real people in real restaurants. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So that's really where I started. My journey kind of meandered, worked in hotels, worked in restaurants, did some catering. Um, One of the hotels that I worked in, funny enough, I was... I guess I was a catering manager 
uh, and became the head of the catering department by accident because the person who had been the manager decided that when she had her child, she wasn't going to come back. And so by default, I was the new manager. Hmm. And that was really fun because at that job, I really got an opportunity to work with a chef and rework menus and really look at the nutritional aspect of, of food. And at the time, food was changing a bit. We were starting to see a little bit more um, plant-based, more uh, at least plant-focused, really more focused on the nutrition rather than you know a big hunk of meat on a plate. Mm-hmm. And you know the heavy food that, uh, especially uh, hotel restaurants, were known for. Uh, kind of burgers and, you know, things like that, that were just not really healthy, but something you could find something on a menu that everybody liked. Right. So that was really, that really piqued my interest even more when it came to the nutrition piece. Um, But then interestingly, my biggest client when I worked at the hotel, I was working in Philadelphia at the time, hired me away. And within a couple of years, uh, because of that, I actually met my husband, Mark, and left the industry and moved to the bustling city of Rochester, Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> and truly, since I came here, um, you know, I left my corporate job behind me, but I knew I'd find my way. I knew I would find something that meant something to Denise, like wholeheartedly. And I kind of meandered for a little bit. I worked at Gift of Life Transplant House. Um, hmm which is an amazing place here in in Rochester. They have a really big transplant department, which actually uh, is the reason why I am here because my husband is a transplant surgeon here. And so that was really an interesting kind of segue into into moving to Rochester, but also again, nutrition, how that applied to people who were unwell. You know, we think food and nutrition, healthy people, but people who are unwell, really need to focus on their nutrition because one, they may have been, they may be unwell because they were not focusing on it. But now that people are, you know, at living health, at living healthy, at gift of life, they were, they were unwell and they were really sick and struggling. Nutrition was such a big part of their recovery and their survival. Mm-hmm. So, um, gosh, that was a while ago. Now I started coaching kind of by accident wanted to do something for me, something different. I wanted to connect with people more one-on-one. So I started health coaching, which made a lot of sense since with my background, decided that I needed a little bit more. So I got uh, a life coaching certification and really enjoyed it. But I realized at one point that I could only work with so many people at once. Right. And, you know, I, so that was kind of tooling in the back of my head. I had a bit of a health issue uh, around this that same time. And I was looking for information that I could trust. My doctor wasn't helpful. The nurses weren't helpful. The internet was the one place I turned to. And that was not helpful either. Hmm. I literally found information that was either, um, it didn't make sense or it was questionable a lot of conflicting information. And I finally said to Mark one time, I said, you know, it would be really great if there was one website where you could find information that you could trust, that it's reliable, that it's unbiased. And he said, so create it. Mm. That's it. Neat. Neat thing. And we're going to talk about that living healthy list in a second. I want to go back for a second to the nutrition piece because mm-hmm. I think about growing up in the 50s, and I was one of these kids with my mom and the four of us, five of us actually, where we were always the kids that had the healthy lunch. Nobody ever wanted to trade with us because all the other kids had Twinkies and Ding Dongs and and all these things. And they go, oh, there's Brooke. He has the healthy sandwich. We'd have like orange slices or uh, celery or carrot slices or something. But talk a little bit about your journey through nutrition because I think it's interesting. And you talk about gift for life and the people that are getting uh, transplants through Mark and so on how much of that was traced back to bad nutrition you mentioned on the recovery road nutrition but i'm still frankly amazed that fast food is even still around and i know they've changed but how big of a role has that played for you getting educated about the role that nutrition played you know my whole background in nutrition is interesting i started cooking when i was 11 um and i remember 
the situation very well because my mom and my sister were stuck on the, the Long Island Expressway. <laughs> they were stuck in traffic. And my mom had called before she left the dentist and said that um, they were going to be late. And so just tell dad dinner would be late. And I saw the stew meat in the fridge and I thought, well, I've had stew before, so I know what goes in it. I said, there's a, I thought to myself, we have a um, cookbook I can read. So I pulled out the cookbook and I made dinner. My mom came in and the look on her face was like, oh my gosh, what's that smell? And I said, I made dinner. And she's like, how did you know how to make dinner? <laughs> I followed the recipe in the cookbook. And she looked at me and she goes, what cookbook? <laughs> she didn't even remember we had a cookbook. But that was, that was a very special moment because I remembered it. I, at that point, I realized that good food can bring people around the table, which is why, you know, holidays, we all come around the table and food is such a big part of our lives. You know, it's not just, you know, you have, I mean, we all have to eat to live, but it really is a big social part of our lives as well. We go out to dinner with friends and families. We have dinner parties, you know, holidays, all of those things. Food is everywhere. But like you said, when we were growing up, um, food was very different. It was much simpler. It was a lot more basic, I think. At least that's how I grew up. You know, we had meat and veg and a potato and, you know, a green salad that probably had some tomatoes and probably iceberg lettuce at the time because that's all you could get. So all of this to me made a lot of sense. So moving forward, that's kind of why I ended up um, focused on more on nutrition. And what I realized, and I probably didn't understand this in college, it wasn't until later on in life when I was working a lot of hours and I was busy, how much nutrition affected your life, both positively and negatively. Mm. Mm -hmm. So when I was busy and I was working 12 hours a day and commuting, my diet was not as good as it had been, it certainly isn't as good as it is today. But I also look back at those days, I was tired a lot. Um, Saturday mornings were my time to catch up on my sleep mm -hmm. because I wasn't sleeping through the night because I wasn't eating while I was eating late. All of the things that I know now really are detrimental to good health. Mm. Um, but at the time, it, it, I, it, there wasn't a big connection. Um, and, and maybe it wasn't, I mean, it was people were talking about it or starting to talk about it more. But I think it was one of those things that I woke up one morning and thought, I don't feel good. Why don't I feel good? And I started to log what I was eating. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so, and I just did that on my own. Mm -hmm. And so that was when I started to realize, okay, there really is a huge connection when I'm eating salads and more vegetables and more healthy foods, I sleep better. My stomach's not bothering me. Um, I feel good. I have energy when I eat out a lot more because I'm working crazy hours and hadn't brought my lunch to work. I'm sluggish. I'm tired. I don't think as well. Hmm. That was the correlation. Wow. So Denise, tell me that, so if somebody's listening, that's thinking, gosh, this makes sense to me. And from your experience, which is, is pretty vast, what would you say would be, I'm a big list person, but what would you give somebody maybe the top five or 10 tips to proper nutrition, all of which is going to lead to those things that you're talking about, which are all higher quality lifestyles. What would you give them as far as kind of a list? Because I love to have these tips I can take away from the show that, that maybe somebody said, oh, I learned how to eat better or better nutrition. What would you give them? Well, one of the things that I've always, always focused on, and sometimes too much, is number one, first and foremost, eat real food, mm. food that grows in the ground, that grows naturally, um, food the way nature intended. So those Twinkies that you were mentioning before, that is not a good example of eating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's an example of things to avoid. Um, the carrot sticks and the celery Definitely. That, right. That's what I mean when I, when, uh, I talk about eat real food. You want to focus on real food 80 to 90% of the time. Okay. You know, nobody's perfect. And, you know, life sometimes gets in the way. Right. So if you're focused on making good food and eating good food, real food, 
most of the time, mm -hmm. then, you know, the times you're out running around and you go, mm, I'm hungry and you, you know, grab something on the go. It's okay because, you know, when you balance it out, you know, 80% of the time you're doing good. And this this 10%, you know, it, it, it works out well. Right. And then um, eat real food, make good decisions. Some of those good decisions, plan ahead, prepare your meals, um, go food shopping. <laughs> One of the things I've seen um, since COVID is people are ordering a lot of food online. And so I was at the supermarket the other day and I was waiting, I had to pick up of all things, solar salt for our hard water here. And I was waiting online behind these two cars and the, the, the guys that were working at the supermarket were loading these people's cars. And I'm looking at what they're, they're putting into the, the back of the car. And I'm looking at these foods and I'm thinking, I didn't see one bag of vegetables. Wow. Wow. Because when you go in a store, that's the place where you first, you walk into a supermarket, you walk into the fruits and veggies aisle. If you're not in a store, that may not be in the front of your mind. Right, right. And wow. so go to the supermarket. I think that is a big part of making good decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and when you, before you go to the, the supermarket, write down a list. Mm. I think having a list is essential for eating good food, for eating healthfully, um, and for not wasting money. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, and I'm, it's interesting to me, just the whole healthy thing is one of the things I've said, it, it's kind of, for some reason, I came up with this years ago, I think I was in my mid 20s, about one of the questions I've always had for life, it's been at the top of my list for a long time, is I don't understand why people don't take better care of themselves. I just don't understand. You've got one body, you've got one set of arms and legs, and, and you know, people have hip replacements, knee replacements, joints, all these separate kind of things. But I'm curious, and you may or may not know this, but when you mentioned Mark, transplant surgeon, what percentage would you just guess, or maybe know through talking to him, of those transplant situations are people that have made poor lifestyle changes versus or choices versus uh, maybe just hereditary or other things? Kind of bad luck of the draw. Um, it's pretty high. Um, when you think, you know, Mark does kidney and pancreas transplant. Mm. Um, you know, there are certainly um, kidney diseases that, you know, people just get and, you know, whether it's uh, familial or just, you know, they got dealt a bad card, mm -hmm. um, type one diabetes, those people at some point usually need a pancreas transplant helps with wow. their diabetes. So these are people who, you know, they didn't do anything to cause it. Right. Um, the people with type two diabetes who weigh a hundred pounds, uh, they're a hundred pounds overweight. Their BMI is off the charts. Right. Those are people who have made poor decisions right. time right. after time, year after year, and it catches up with you quickly. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing in, or in the health and wellness field, and obviously in the medical field too, it's very different, health and wellness field, medical field. You know, we're focused in health and wellness. We're, we're focused on keeping people healthy. The medical right. field is help, trying to help people who um, are sick and yeah. getting them to a different level. Yeah. But what we see um, when it comes to, um, to type two diabetes and obesity and some of these other diseases, cardiovascular disease, um, all sorts of um, diseases or disease states that people would get when they were much older, people are getting in their forties. Wow. And, and again, it's, it's lifestyle choices, right? It's those making good choices, you know, my favorite, food, I'll tell you, I'll put this up here right now. People who know me know what I'm going to say. When it comes to my two favorite foods, pizza, jelly donuts. <laughs> they are. I love pizza and jelly donuts. I probably haven't had a jelly donut in probably three months. But the next time I have a jelly donut, I am going to enjoy that jelly donut. One, because I haven't had one. But also, I fit it into my, my kind of lifestyle. Right. You know, if I'm out and with my mom, I'm going to be down in Florida with my mom. I'm sure we're going to end up at Dunkin' Donuts at one point. Mm -hmm. But so I think I'm you make I think you make a good point, though. I think about it makes me think of 
where I've done talks to senior centers where the average age is 80 and 90, I would always try to seek out the oldest person I could to ask him this question, you know, and tell me, you know, some thoughts about you looking back on your life. And I asked this guy one day and it just hit me. And a number of people said the same thing is what his advice was about life, everything in moderation. So a jelly donut once every three months or with mom down in Florida where is fine, but not every day, you know, and that, and so it's always that kind of understanding that. So, well, that I want to kind of, I want to spend some time on living healthy lists. So let's segue over into that and talk about that. I'm always fascinated with the world of nutrition, just because I remember growing up, you hear all these cliches and things and you are what you eat. And I always thought that was so funny. And then later it hit me, well, that's actually true. You know, you are, you wouldn't put bad gas in the car and expect it to go well or to drive well. So talk about how that was kind of formed and kind of what the goals are with that, because I think that's really the bulk of what you're doing now, which I think is really cool. It is. I really have transitioned from uh, one-on-one coaching to being the CEO and curator, aka editor, um, at Living Healthy List, livinghealthylist.com. And truly, the reason why I started it really is actually twofold. One, because I know there are people out there looking for honest, reliable, and unbiased information from experts they can trust. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily somebody who spent a lot of money on pretty sales pages and, um, you know, Facebook ads, but people that are real people who really want to help. So there's the people looking for help. And then on the other hand, there are the experts like me, like the experts we have on Living Healthy List, who have the desire to help people, but we're ha- they were having trouble getting their message out. Again, maybe they didn't have the money to spend on all of these flashy ads and things, but they are really the backbone of, of coaching, of health and wellness, because they're the people who are you know, really in it for the right reasons. They're in it to help people. They're not in it first and foremost for money. Um, Living Healthy List is about education and engagement first. So we want to engage our audience in conversations. We want to educate them in the topics that they're looking for. You know, there's so much, especially as a woman 50 and over, I can say that now, now that I'm 50, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that health and wellness stuff that, that we need to know that the doctors don't talk about, that our mothers don't talk about. And so really we're looking for that information online. And that's the challenge. Where do you find good information, real information, trustworthy information? And Denise, well, let me just interject here. What are some of their top questions? Because I think that's really interesting. Education, engagement, information, and so forth. So that average woman, 50s, whatever age it might be, what are some of their top questions? You get the, some of the same ones over and over again, I would imagine. Yes, of course. Um, and of course, first and foremost, the, the one thing, the first one I would say is, you know, how do I lose this 20 pounds that, you know, showed up and now I don't know what to do with? Um, because as your body changes, you know, it, as, I mean, as a man and a woman, your body changes as you get older. Right. And so you need to focus on things different. So you have to eat differently. You have to exercise differently. Um, so the, that's probably the number one question. How do I lose this weight? Interesting. Uh, and, and, and not just lose the weight, but for good. How do I keep it off? Mm. Because we all know there's a ton of diets out there. It's a multi-million dollar um, pr- um business when it comes to weight loss. I mean, you can follow any program and if you follow it to the T, it'll work. So do you have some that you would recommend? And the reason I asked that is I mentioned you uh, before the show that I went through and I went from two and a quarter to 185 and, and there's all these diets out there and so forth, but I, edu- I educate, I exercise a lot. And so I'll walk eight to 10 miles a day and so forth, but I know that's part of it. But what I really found, Denise, is with all these, you know, the, the, they had many, many names for the diets. It simply for me was a case of using three or 4,000 calories a day, taking in about a thousand and drinking a gallon of water. And then the rest took care of itself. So do you recommend sort of a course of actions? Does it depend on the woman or the situation? Or is it kind of something that what's high on your list for how those people can lose that 20 and keep it off? Okay, most people are going to hate that I'm going to say this, but it is so true. If you want to lose weight, it's all about calories in calories out. Mm 
Yeah. 100%. You can eat, you know, if your daily intake is say 1400 calories. So mine with my exercise is about 1600 calories. So we'll use me. I can, if I ate 1599 calories of jelly donuts, mm -hmm. I would still be under my 1600 calories. So there right. would be a calorie deficit. Right. I wouldn't be healthy because I wouldn't feel good, but I would be losing weight. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to losing weight, it is calories in calories out. So that's first and foremost, but we want to make those calories count. And so that's, I said calories count, not count calories, by the way, we want to make those calories count. So that's where the eat real food 80 to 90% of the time comes in salads, um, fruits and veggies, um, whole grains, all of those um, healthful foods, one, keep you fuller longer. They have fiber, so they keep you fuller longer. So you're not going, oh, I'm hungry 10 minutes after you've mm -hmm. eaten. Mm -hmm. um, it's giving you the nutrition your body needs to function properly. And you get full really fast. I mean, you can't eat like a ton of salad. Right. Um, because you, you get bloated and you're like, oh my God, I can't eat anymore. So you're full of healthy food. Right. But even though you're full, you've also eaten less calories than you would if you had gone to, um, you know, had a hamburger and, you know, even a side salad. So, well, and I think it's so, it's so neat too, that, uh, and I just wrote this down, making these notes and some of these takeaways, but the calories in, you said people are going to hate you for that, but it really is true. Calories in calories out. I also think with all the technology, here's my Fitbit. And I actually have an aura ring too, which keeps track of things, yep. but the calories in and calories out is very simple. You, you go not trying to sell Fitbit, but you go in there and you put in, you know, one uh, half a grapefruit, this, that, you know, two hard boiled eggs, that was 180 per that's 360 and so forth. And then this keeps track of the calories you burn. Yep. And so it was so simple. And yet people, oh, well, how did you do it? And it's like, it's some mystery. And that's why, as you said, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. And yet it just seems to be so simple. So if I look at some of these women's issues, and again, getting back to living healthy list, um, and I talk about some of their top questions, how do you lose 20 pounds and keep it off? What are some other big issues that, that women are facing that you coach and that you deal with? Um, women around the, we, we, we say women 45 and over because women at 45 and over are starting to deal with perimenopausal symptoms. Mm -hmm. So they're not sleeping. Mm -hmm. Um, they're having night sweats or hot flashes during the day. Um, they've noticed that they're, they have higher anxiety than they ever mm -hmm. did before. And all of those things are related to, um, or associated with, perimenopause and menopause, everything always comes back to eat real food. Mm. Because when you're eating healthfully, the, the symptoms of perimenopause are lessened. You know, if you're not sleeping, you know, that's something that you can also track, like you said, on your Fitbit, um, you can track those things. And a lot of times, you know, we're busy, we have busy lives um, it, I mean, if any woman, woman is like me from the minute I get up to the minute I, I go to bed at night, I'm going, I'm, I'm like the energizer bunny, go, 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 do, do, do. And so if I eat late, yeah, I'm going to have some trouble sleeping. Mm. And I think that's one of the things that, um, you know, we're, we're saying it's perimenopause, but it could really still just be lifestyle. Right. Right. And we're blaming it on something else. Interestingly, there was a study that came out not all that long ago, maybe within the last couple of weeks, because I remember watching it on the Today Show. I was on my treadmill and I'm like, I have to turn this, I have to stop just to watch this. And what they were saying, you know, as we get older, you know, we do tend to get a little thicker in the middle, you know, maybe a little more doughy. Um, and we always blame it on our metabolism. Oh, our mm -hmm. metabolism is slowing down. Oh, my, and my metabolism. Oh, whatever. Guess what? It turns out that your metabolism slows down yeah, when you're in your 80s, you know, a little mm -hmm. bit as you get older, wow. but we are blaming all of our overweight population on metabolism. And it turns out it's probably not true. It probably is years of eating a little bit too much, having too many calories. And then all of a sudden, you know, we're not working out as much as we used to. And so, yeah, we all of a sudden turn 50 and we're going, oh, what's this little tire here? Mm -hmm. but we blame mm -hmm. it on something else where it more than likely is um, lifestyle, food, and just good making good choices.
And I was just making some notes too on the, I highlighted the eat real food, 80, 90% of the time, make good decisions, prepare your meals, make a list before you go grocery shopping and so forth. And it's just interesting to me that I kind of, I'm, I'm very list oriented and it's interesting how just on any given day, and that's why I'd be curious, maybe your top five or top 10 of things beyond food that people do. And I think about getting up, you, know, you take your shower, you get ready to go and so forth. And then I always do about a 15 minute meditation. And then I take five to 10 minutes to write in the gratitude journal, drink a big glass of water with some lemon juice, take my vitamins and so forth. And then I'll do some stretching. And so do you have sort of a, again, from the, the living healthy list, I'm a big list person. So it always attracts my attention that you would give somebody as kind of a daily checklist of things that they, that they should be doing. Actually, it's funny that you said, you said so many of them. Um, the first thing that I would say is to, to get up at the same time every day. Mm. Routine is really important to us. You know, um, uh, our, um, circadian rhythms really, that that's really important. I think in our day and age, you know, we watch too much TV at night. And so maybe we sleep a little later, especially in the last year and a half with the pandemic, we don't have to go into work. So maybe we're sleeping later. So that's first and the first thing I would say. Um, and there are a number of experts on living healthy list who would, you know, who have um, additional information too. Mm -hmm. So um, some of this is, is from me completely, but some of this is from my other experts because they've taught me well also. Nice. Um, and I do believe, you know, taking, you know, 15, 20 minutes in the morning for gratitude and meditation, um, it doesn't have to be a big deal. I, I do my meditation and write in my journal before I get out of bed mm -hmm. in the morning, because I know as soon as I get up, I'm going to be going and doing. So do it before you get out of bed, or at least before you leave your bedroom. Nice. Um, I would say this is a really good time also to just pick up a book for 15 minutes. You know, how often are we saying, oh, you know, I really wanted to read, you know, that new, that new bestseller, but we never have time. Right. The morning before we get up. And so maybe you get up a little mm, half an hour earlier than you're used to. Mm -hmm. These are ways to start your day on in a positive way. Um, so then I would say, you know, definitely, you know, 16 ounces of water before you do anything else. Um, some day, some days or some nights I'll have the glass there, uh, for the morning. I don't really already remember that, but right. a glass of water. And the reason why people always kind of poo poo it, but it's really important because think about it. If you've had eight hours of sleep, you have been dehydrated. You haven't had anything to All drink right. in those eight hours. That's right. You know, but during the day, we're saying, make sure you're, you know, you're drinking your 32 ounces of 64 ounces of water, right. um, whatever it might be, depending on your size. But then all of a sudden, okay, so you go to bed and you stop doing it. So yeah. your body is going, hello. Yeah, it's out of balance. Yeah, that's, and they, they say that the health practitioners I talk to that half the country or something goes around dehydrated as you take a drink of water, perfect timing. And so Denise, how do you feel about supplements? Oh, I love, I love this question because back in the day, I would say, you don't need supplements because you're eating real food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, but yes, but. That there's that this is definitely a yes, but I believe that supplements absolutely have their place. They are supplemental to your healthy diet. Mm. I think in the past, what people people kind of look at supplements like they're gonna drink shakes all day long instead of right. eating real food. Right. And so in that respect, I don't agree with supplements. They should be supplementing a good, healthy diet. Um, I get up in the morning. I always take a, pre a probiotic. I didn't for years and I had tummy issues. Once I started taking a probiotic, oh my gosh, wow. tummy issues went away. Neat. Yeah, I think it's important. I think there's a lot of things. I always like the car analogy. I've said many mm -hmm. times to coaching clients, you spend more time tuning up your car than you do getting your brain between your ears and so on. But I, I love the analogy if you could put you know, a gas booster in your gas to make the gas work more effectively or an oil thing that keeps the oil from breaking down or keep your tires inflated at the right uh, level so the car doesn't sink down lower and cost you more mileage and slow you down and so forth. So I think there's some decent analogies there, but I've always been a big believer in supplements and 
And I've heard people go all the way from they're the greatest thing ever to it's just expensive urine that you're dealing with and so on. But, but I sort of believe that it's just a, a mixture of all these things together that makes such a big difference. And, and I'm just looking at these and we got to wrap up in a couple of minutes. So I'm going to actually slide into some takeaways here too, because I hadn't even, you got all these good points here. And then I think, of course, we talked about exercise, which is every book I've read about aging, whether it's males or female, uh, it, it usually at the top of the list, if not first or second is exercise and what it can do for you. And even though I used to be a runner and so forth, I walk and I listen to those podcasts. I mentioned that to, to you offline earlier. And you know, exercise, when it comes to exercise, David, as we get yes. older, we need to exercise more, not less. Oh, Okay. Great, because and and you mentioned the metabolism about slowing down in the 80s. It, it's interesting. However, it slows down too. It just makes sense to think the body isn't operating as efficiently as it used to. So if you're bringing in the same amount of food you did in the 20s and 30s, what's going to happen with that food? And you mentioned the kind of the tire around the the middle and so forth. So so just to to I'm going to go back and hit a couple of highlights, and then I've got one final question as we wrap up too. But I like the. Um, nutrition can be positive or negative, affect you positively or negatively. And I just think it's so, I see guys with these gigantic, looks like they have a beach ball in their stomach. And I think not only is that hard on your body, but imagine your back that's trying to counterbalance this weight and so forth. Uh, good food can bring people together around the table. I thought that was really neat. And you think it's so true. Let's meet for breakfast. Let's meet for lunch. Let's meet for dinner. You know, let's have coffee and get a jelly donut, you know, as an example, or just anything you're coming over for Thanksgiving, you're coming over for Christmas, you know, and so forth. So, so true. And then I love this. And I really highlighted it to eat real food. And I put 80 to 90% of the time, I think you had mentioned. And again, we've got fast food and all these things that are just poor substitutes for food, make good decisions. And again, back to that, you are what you eat as much as I laughed at that. It's really, really true. Very and true. again, the good gas in the car makes the car run better. Uh, prepare your meals, make a list to go grocery shopping. And then I'm going to put in the show notes to livinghealthylist.com is where you can get more information about Denise and all her educators. And then this sort of this top 10, which I thought was really, really good, is that get up at the same time every single day, uh, take 15 minutes for a gratitude or meditation practice. My gratitude journal that I sell takes literally five minutes to write in. And so, and then meditation, anything in the 10 to 15 minute range, I think is really powerful. Uh, pick up a book for 15 minutes and then just get your brain. And something I read the other day that kind of goes with that, and I'm trying to get better at this is no screens, any kind for the last hour before you go to bed. So what's a perfect substitute is a book, substitute Absolutely. is a book. And so no computer, no laptop no tv and then you get it's the the blue of the screen and the melatonin isn't produced as fast which helps you sleep and so forth so uh the 16 ounces big glass of water when you first uh wake up and then the supplements very important and then as you said exercise more especially as you get older and the whole population is getting older so that's really really key yeah, so, we need to sweat that's that's when it comes to exercise you oh, have yeah. to sweat need to absolutely sweat. has to sweat you know kind of tooling around the neighborhood is is okay but if you really want to stay healthy you want to keep your bones strong you got to get out there and sweat yeah and i might just add uh, possibly too much information but is this out being out for about two to two and a half hours i'm walking so i don't walk like scream just a normal pace but when i get back i have to change my t-shirt and i've just been walking you know mm -hmm. and it's just so funny and under you know blah 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 so yeah. you're definitely the sweating is important too and it's so interesting because to me even though i'll go out for two to two and a half hours the smartphone i've got the airpods on listening to podcasts listening to books on audible making notes in the phone calling friends and following up on some things and, and the talk the walk feels like it's a half hour long so it's, it's so good. So, well, listen, this has been fantastic. And, and I will ask you the question I ask everybody is my final question on my podcast is Denise, let, let everybody know that uh, she had hit the first digit was a five in her age. So at 50, so wherever that 50 is right now, and you only get to pick one thing, what's one thing, you know, today you would have liked to known at 18 that would have helped you. <laughs> I can only pick one. You can only pick one. That's the, it's gotta be the key. Um, if I knew when I was 18, what I, when I know now, it, the one thing would be to, it's going to work out. Mm. Don't stress so much about it. It's going to work out. If you have a, if you have an idea, if you're curious, have curiosity in your life and you have dreams and desires, just go for it. They're going to work out. Boy, that is really, really good stuff. It's going to work out. That is an excellent tip. And as you said, 
I know that there are many things you could come up. I could come up with many things too, but I only said one, so it's going to work out. So, well, thank you again. And so just as a reminder, everybody, let me mention a couple of things before we wrap up. As I mentioned earlier, my podcast is downloaded every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. on the Transformation Talk Radio Network and is available on Apple, Spotify, and Google. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating. If you like what you hear, it's always appreciated. And also, I know a lot of people are struggling with life issues. And so I have a program for you. And my gratitude coaching program will give you a coach that fully believes in you and can propel you forward to achieve anything your mind can conceive. The support you receive is unmatched in getting you to believe in you and make changes that you've been wanting and needing to make. Whether it's your finances, your relationships, your career, or your life's journey you want to change, then this is the program for you. Gaining a complete understanding of your challenges, asking powerful questions, providing guidance, and a very high level of accountability, which is important, along with an attitude of gratitude all combined to ensure your personal success. My four-month proprietary gratitude coaching program is priced at $4,500, and for my podcast listeners, you'll receive two extra months free of charge. So for more information about my proprietary gratitude coaching program, keynote speaking, or to purchase a gratitude journal, you can reach me at thatgratitudeguy.com, or as you can see in the background, thatgratitudeguypodcast.com, and also email David at thatgratitudeguy. And one final thing before we wrap up, many people ask me about my Monday morning minute. If you'd like to get my Monday morning minute, which is a one minute video every Monday to start your week off on a positive note. You can text the number 22828, that's five digits, 22828, and in the message box, put in gratitude guy, and that'll get you the Monday morning minute. So lastly, thank you all so much for tuning. Thank you, Denise, again. Thank you for all turning in. And remember, as I always say with every podcast, I'm David George Brooks, that gratitude guy. Remember, be grateful and never quit. So long. Thank you for listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke, where living with gratitude turns what you have into enough. Transformation starts now and you have everything you need to achieve great things. In a world that is constantly changing, there is motivation and inspiration right in front of us, and you can find yours right now. Don't wait. Visit thatgratitudeguy.com to get started living with gratitude today.